What's going on, guys? It's Madman Plant. We are here at Smokebusters, another fantastic podcast at the Cowboy Cup. And I get the kid of bros with us. What's going yes, on, sir? my dude? Yes, sir. What's, What's up? going on? What's up? Your boy, Jarrell. And I'm Corey. And we are the, the Canada Bros. Dude, media trained. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, sir. So I was walking through, and I just um, having to pop it on to you guys. So you're kind of like me, multifaceted, got yep. a lot of things doing in the community. Yep. yep. So you guys help people with finances, mm-hmm. and then you have an experience through your brand. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So yeah. let's talk about it. So why finances, and why is it important to help people in the financial world? Talk about it. Well, let's talk about the cannabis industry and the lack of financial knowledge out there. So, you know, when there's, when you're dealing with hemp, you're dealing with marijuana, mm-hmm. they're all treated differently when it comes to the federal government, yep, right? Yep. It's all based off the THC percentage, that 0.3% Delta 9 THC to determine if it's going to be hemp or if it's going to be marijuana, right? So the, there's a boogeyman called 280E that's out there, right? So most brands in here oh, that, they know. that sell and or <laughs> grow marijuana are subject to 280E. Yep. So it's our job to help educate, doing help them with the bookkeeping, accounting, the taxes, to make sure that they understand how to navigate, so they know they know how how to stay uh, financially compliant, mm-hmm. and also what strategies they can implement to help reduce the burden of 280E. Yep. Now, where does this background come from? Like, what did you do before this that led you to understand all this? Oh man, I was a uh, I was a ninja in the Thailand. No, I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to think how that correlates somehow. Well, you know we gotta <laughs> like be sneaky. Ninja and you gotta, finances. Right. So yeah, so we had we started way back in like, 2015. Yeah. 2015, we started off with our own tax base. Okay, I had cool. our own tax business, and then it's evolved from there. Very cool. And then in 2020, we evolved it to uh, Harvest AF Financial Consulting, which now is a full-scale uh, financial operation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he does the bookkeeping. I'm an enrolled agent. We have our team with the accountants and bookkeepers that work with us. And uh, man, we go, we get y'all squared away, man. Yep. Check us out. Well, that's cool, and that's why I answered the question or asked the question because it seems like you guys really know your shit. So mm-hmm. it yeah, seemed yeah. like you had some background in this that yep. allowed you to go one to educate people, but two be successful with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So with that, we got the experience. So why don't you talk about the clothing brand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the clothing brand is called Mink Mentality. Uh, so MinkMentalityMerch.com. So the idea behind it is: Have you ever seen the movie Monsters Inc? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so on the movie Monster Monsters Inc., what did Sully and you know them do for a living? They scared children. Yes, but when they went in, how did they get to the children? The closet. That's right, through the doors, right? And so when we look at it, uh, that mink, along with the animal, the mink, which is a fer- ferocious type of animal that do whatever to provide and protect for its community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So mix those two together. We're about seizing the opportunity. Yeah. at every chance that you can get. But when you go through that door of opportunity, whether good or bad, success or failure, you leave it behind because you have so much to accomplish. Yep. So that's what Mink Mentality is really about. It's the mentality of really getting to it for the hustlers, the go-getters, the people that won't take no for an answer, like yourself. Uh, yep. I- Mink Mentality, man. So yeah, we got some pretty dope designs. What I'm wearing right now is uh, the standing on business. Standing on business. Standing on Mink business, hoodie <laughs> and the sweatpants. So we got some really dope stuff. Yes, we got track pants. We got all kind of stuff. Uh, so definitely check it out. MinkMentalityMerch.com, uh, inspired by the Cannabras yes, podcast sir. and the Cannabras media. So now that we know your business and everything, yep. let's talk about the smoking and growing. Which side are you guys on? Smoking. Smoking, okay. Yeah. So talk, let's talk about smoking real quick. Flavors, like you guys, funky, gas? Mm, I would say more funky is what I'm, I, now I'll smoke a little bit of everything. I'll try anything twice always. What about you? <laughs> you know? Um, so um, I'm more on the growing, and when I say growing, growing your business. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful thing about Corey and I is that, you know, we come from, any angle that you can think of, you know, uh, when it comes to a a Mm non-consumer and a person that heavily consumes. Mm -hmm. So we really have a full understanding of anything that you have to throw at us as, you know, people have their their, uh, preconceived notions about cannabis and things like that. So we try to make sure we can understand everybody and allowing those two different angles to uh, play play a part in our vision is a big, big thing. 
And then your podcast. What yep. is what is your general conversation with people? What are you guys talking about? Obviously, other than finances yeah. and having to you know educate people. Yeah. Other than that, the Cannon Bros podcast is about putting the arms around the community. So much like we're doing right now mm-hmm. here today at the Cowboy Cup, mm-hmm. we like to put our arms around the community yep. and invite. Uh, different, you know, um, businesses, business owners with that have that mink mentality, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to actually, you know, talk about the things that make them a success, the strategies financially, but also just what they're doing to stand out from the crowd. So we do that. We want to be a voice for the people that don't have a, a big enough voice, right? That's just like you exist for that reason to push the community forward and develop it. Yeah, and I also think too is you know education is key, whether. You know, it's about growing plants or growing your business. Yep, yep, yep. And as an entrepreneur, business owner, multi-business owner myself, um, it's so valuable. And a lot of the things like this, you don't learn until you're inside of it. Exactly. And that's one of the problems too, is there's no training ground for this. Exactly. And being an entrepreneur, you know, it's a risk. And I don't think a lot of yep. people understand they can protect themselves with the right type of knowledge. And especially in the cannabis industry where it's so gray area, you know, like, we're in a state right now where it is only medically legal, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that's at risk too right now, right? I yeah. mean, we've been hearing about that. Oh yeah, they've been making announcements about you know your property and people walking around and yeah. you know, how to protect yourself. Yep. And it and we shouldn't live in a world like this. Right. We're not right. doing anything wrong. Right. And yet, you know, we're all here trying to have a good time, and now we got to watch each other's backs over what you know. Right. But it's right. like. Hey, if you want alcohol, we sell alcohol. Let's go buy some alcohol. And I like alcohol. I don't right. have a problem with it. But if I had to choose, I'm smoking. Right. But, you know, right. it's just kind of funny where it's like, oh, well, don't do that. But that's okay. You know, drink as much as you want, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and die. It's, it's very hypocritical because, you know, it's like when, when you look at alcohol, like alcohol, for some people, it relaxes them. But then you drink too much alcohol, then their personality does a 180. Yeah, right? yeah. The, their inner demons, whatever they're trying to process in life comes out. Yeah. Some people get angry and violent versus when you utilize the plant, when you consume the plant, it helps you relax. It helps, there, it's medicine. Yeah, so it helps it, you it, heal. Exactly, yep. exactly. So if you if you are stressed, if you do have anxiety, if you do, um, uh, after a long day and you're a, a, a parent watching two toddlers <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they're, they're fighting, they, one broke a lamp, the dog pissed on the couch and he was like, yo, I just need something to help me just relax. Yeah. Yes. Before I say or do something that's going to force or cause me to get in even more trouble. Yep. So that's that's the beauty of the plant. That's why, you know, we always adv- we advocate for the industry yeah. the way we do on top of, you know, we help um, advocate for minorities in the industry as well. Yep. Just because the it's two percent ownership did you know that it's two percent on black percent two percent of owners are black in this industry did you know that interesting and and it was four it was four percent industry growing the amount of minority ownership is decreasing interesting and, and it's getting diluted even more and more and more so you know we we also advocate in from in support of the industry to show one the representation out there and two to be a voice to help them know that they can do it as well yeah. right so i mean that's that's a big thing for us is, is advocating for the industry and advocating for the people man well said yeah and i think it's important because i think a lot of people get into this with good intentions right and either the industry burns them or they didn't know what they were exactly doing and yep. then they lost it all yep, yep. what are some of the big misconceptions about finance and uh, uh, cannabis like give me like three those are good ones um here's a big misconception um they think that the the understanding that there's only one there's not really a great understanding of the actual legal methods of doing accounting so they think that you know a lot of the things can be done after the fact and in reality getting your your business set up before is actually the only way to actually make sure that your books are clean you're not if you were to get audited that they couldn't pick apart a bad month so got you. that's one. And I mean, there's a lot. There, there is a lot. I'm gonna ask you a question. 
what do you know about uh, business finances? Do you understand bookkeeping, taxes, and accounting and all that? Yeah, we have a CPA for our business. <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm talking about. There the reason go. I ask Somebody because can handle it. There, as a business owner, you wear so many hats. Yep, yep, yep. Right? Yep, yep. When you think that, hey, I need to cut costs, especially in this industry because they're – in the cannabis industry, businesses are bleeding money like crazy, right? There's so yep. many taxes out there. And you're like, well, I got to cut costs somewhere. I can't afford to get a bookkeeper or uh, uh, an accountant or anything like that. And they're like, I'm going to do it myself, right? Deadly. Or I'm going to hire my brother um, and he can figure it out himself. Well, that right there is going to cost you more on the back end mm -hmm. than it is up front. Yep. And, yep. and that is a, a huge misconception on top of just because you pay a state tax, a state tax. That's the one I thought you were going to say. Yeah. Yeah. There's also federal tax yep. as well. Many business owners in different states that we service think like, hey, I paid my excise tax. I paid my sales tax. I paid my state tax. Like, I'm done, right? And they go years and years without ever filing their federal taxes. Penalties yeah. just stacking up. And, and 280E is a federal statute. And so... The IRS is taking notes, and eventually they're going to come, and you're going to get audited, or you're going to get a notice from the IRS. And then once that happens, <laughs> it's over. You're you're in a big, it's a big predicament, penalties, interest that compound on top of each other, mm -hmm. and then you're like, man, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to grow, man. I'm just trying to run a business. I'm not, but financial compliance is is key, man. It's huge. Yep. Yeah. No, it's interesting how. A lot of people, you know, I was listening to a guy named Jim Rohn. He's an old motivational speaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. I listen, you should check, check him out. Okay. Really, like, cool guy to listen to. And, you know, it's the power of delegation. And that's one thing that I've been implementing in my own businesses is, you know, replacing myself and getting <laughs> there people you go. in. And the idea that it, it costs you more money, theoretically, to do something yourself than to just have somebody else who already is trained in that, knows exactly, exactly. what they're doing, that can make it very easy and fast to just pay them out yeah. and I know that you know a lot of business owners you're know, like oh you know like you said you know kind of expenses all that but you don't want to fuck up and I'm glad that I've done the taxes right because I've never been audited you know and mm. I've never had anything bad happen um, but yeah no it's a real thing and I think a lot of times too is you start making money and then you realize oh I'm going to be charged about 30% on all that you know mm -hmm. what I mean so every time I make money you know you got to realize that Part of that you're gonna be paying back anyway, so exactly. it's, it's yep. a deadly game, especially finance, especially if you don't know that. And yep. then all of a sudden, there's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in back taxes. Right. And you're yep. like, what the fuck? I don't know. Now they're looking at you like a criminal. Yeah, in exactly. Reality, you like just, you did this on purpose. Yeah, it's, it's just, you just weren't educated. Yeah, and you, exactly. you maybe you came from the legacy market and you simply just wanted to like all I'd ever done in my life was grow. You know, and now you want to open up a legitimate business, but you don't know that piece, yep. or you don't, you know, um, like you said, uh, put someone in charge of all these different sectors, sectors of your business to actually make it run efficiently. Yep. Like you said, you're, you're, you are, you're wasting more money yep. that way. And time. Yeah. And time. Something you can't get back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, no, that's priceless too, is, you know, and the time that you do waste. And that's why it might be a little bit more expensive out of the bank account. But that time, you also can't put a price on. And if you're the leader of your business, and most people in small businesses are the owner and the operator, that's why the difference between founder and CEO yep, on yep. titles is very you specific. Go. You know, because a lot of people own the company and then they work in the company. Yep. And when you're always working in your company, you will never work grow. On the company. You mm. will yep. get to a point yep. where you plateau, yep. and then that's it. And then you got to figure out something else. So that's why. I have a very good mentor. Good. Um, in 1993, he went away to federal prison for nine years for marijuana possession, wow. racketeering, mm. um, the Rico, all that mm. stuff. You Man. know, um, so he said he saw what real monsters were like in prison mm -hmm. and changed his life. 2020, dead broke. 2023 has six cars, two houses, and drives around in a Lamborghini just for fun. Man. But the but the point was is. His number one goal or rule in business is hire fast and fire faster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, that's a great stack point. employees. Yeah, I've heard that. That's, that's a great I've point. heard that. Yeah, man, it's it's a lot 
being a business owner is tough. It's it's tough, and as you said, there's a lot of on-the-job training. Yeah. If you don't have the mentorship to teach mm -hmm. you how to run your business, then you have to be the one that seeks out that information, find somebody that's successful in the same industry that you're in, and then learn from them if possible. And it's it's tough too because the the biggest issue that a lot of businesses that we come in contact with face is the the very first issue, the capital. Yeah. I don't I don't have the money. Like you know maybe I don't I don't come from money. You know whatever. Yep. We hear that story all the time. And they're in need of capital. That capital issue is such a big thing because you may have the game mm -hmm. to say, hey, okay, I know I'm supposed to hire fast and fire even faster. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm supposed to delegate. I know everything. I even researched 280E and I know about that. Yep. But I can't afford to really operate my business even in the first couple quarters. Yep, yep. And so capital is a big thing, a and, big issue. And that's where we started the Seed to Success method. So. The C to success method, what it does is it, it takes you from wherever you are, right? So let's say no matter what industry you're in, specifically if you're in a high risk industry, meaning that the banks deem your business a high financial risk so they don't want to give you the funding that you deserve. Yeah, the yeah, ones they right? won't touch. Exactly. So the C to success the C to success method, what it does is we we work with you and help you get business uh, unsecured business funding, right? Whether it be a business term loan or it be uh, business credit cards, right? None of it, the only thing that touches your personal is just an inquiry to make sure like, hey, you got a 700 credit score and above, because hey man, if, if unsecure means there's no collateral, there's no assets that they're asking you to, to leverage yeah. you for your capital. Up? So they're like, hey, we wanna make sure that you have a solid credit score. And then from that piece, we have them sit down with one of our business budget specialists to help them budget the funds that they got. Mm -hmm. We help them with a business, uh, our, our harvest day of business questionnaire, business plan questionnaire. And what that does is help them create that plan along with the budget so that they can utilize the funds correctly so they don't fall into uh, the trap or the lottery effect. You know what that is? No. Talk about it. <laughs> so, so think about it. It's most people that win the lottery go broke five to ten years after receiving it. Wow. Yeah, there's even a, a video on YouTube that talks about how unlucky or how cursed people come. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and that's what it is. They don't have a plan for the money, so when you don't have a plan for the money, you, you spend uh, irresponsibly yeah. and negligently, right? And so if you buy this mansion, and then this mansion has um, the property taxes extremely high, right? That's a yearly payment plus your mortgage and, and all the other expenses. Easy to go broke that way. After a while, your, your money is dwindling, right? Yeah. But you don't have any other additional income coming in to, yep. to fill that in, right? So you're going to be upside down and you're going to be bankrupt after a certain point. And that's really going to mess your life up, mm, yep. right? So same thing on the business side is when you get funding, uh, you need to understand how to use that funding to help it benefit your business the best and how to budget it mm -hmm. and then on top of all of that then we help them with a tax plan so you're using the money that you got right and you're using that money to grow your business well let's say you 10x your bit your income right now you're going to be taxed more we're going to help you create a tax plan so that you can mitigate uh have a tax strategy to help mitigate paying all this extra money in taxes we're, and and that's the beauty of the seed to success method we're with you from the seed level with seed capital and we help you get to the success that you want to be no i love that and how can people learn more about you guys man yeah Go ahead. man look so you can check us out uh for as far as the seed to success method is s2s method so the letter s the number two the letter s method.com uh, you can find us. Uh, we got harvestaf.net. Yep. We got. You can you can hop on to the cannabrus.com where you'll see everything from our latest podcast episode. We do a weekly audio podcast, yes, and sir. then we do some very special visual podcasts every now and then. And then on that the cannabrus.com, you can also find the link to makementalitymerch.com. Yes, so if you really want to wear your mindset and let people know where you are uh, set apart from the rest. That's the best way to do it. Yep. Very cool. And this is what it's all about, guys. It's bringing you guys in the world that are passionate, positive, 
willing to change the way you play the game because that's all it is. It's just yes, a big bi- yeah. giant game. And once you harness that energy and figure out exactly what you're going to do, your game plans, your moves are going to be so much stronger. And thank mm. you guys so much for taking the time for the community like that. You know, we need yep. more people like you guys who really have each other's backs and are really watching the f- future forward. Yeah, yeah, man. And you, you're you doing a hell of a job hell yourself, yeah. man. Yeah, it, it's, it's dope that not only have you found it a great found a great way to brand yourself and what you're doing you know with smoke busters and everything but also the fact that you know your business and we can tell that you have a good grip Mm -hmm. on understanding your role and who you who needs to be appointed and how you need to delegate and everything like that to succeed so we know we'll be seeing you around for a while oh yeah, yeah. no same and i look forward to future collaborations yeah. and education so that's what this podcast is all about we'll see you guys next time at smoke busters 